This is a tutorial video describing how to complete simple titration calculations as encountered in the quantitative chemistry section of AQA GCSE Chemistry. There's a link in the description to a worksheet with some brief questions about the video and some more calculation practice, but there are also plenty of questions within this video. By the end of this video, you should be able to calculate the moles of a substance based on its concentration and volume. You should be confident using the coefficients that are found in symbol equations to work out molar ratios and you should be able to complete extended calculations in which you calculate the concentration of an unknown solution either in moles per decimeter cubed or in grams per decimeter cubed. Titration is an analytical method that uses a chemical reaction to help us work out the concentration of an unknown substance. This is done by performing a chemical reaction in which we already know the concentration of the second reactant. At GCSE, we pretty much exclusively deal with acid-based titrations, but as you go on studying chemistry, you'll also discover back titrations with solid substances and redox titrations, which indicate themselves. The purpose of the titration is to work out the concentration of the unknown solution in the conical flask. We can either use a chemical indicator or a pH probe in order to determine when the reaction is complete and the solutions have been neutralised. This point where we see the first permanent colour change is called the end point. Titration calculations can be broken down into three steps. We'll look at each of these individually and then put them back together in order to complete extended calculations. In almost every quantitative chemistry calculation you meet in GCSE Chemistry, your starting point will be to work out the moles of something. In this instance, we have two solutions. And so the formula we're going to need is the concentration formula. You know that concentration is found by dividing the number of moles by the volume. And we can rearrange that so that we know the number of moles is the concentration times by the volume. So since we already know the concentration and the volume of one of the reacting solutions, we will be able to work out the number of moles. Next, we're going to use the symbol equation. And specifically, we're going to use the coefficients within it. So those are the large numbers in front of the different reactants those tell you the ratio in which those reactants react. So if we already know the number of moles of reactant 1, and we then know the ratio with which it reacts with reactant 2, we can work out the number of moles for reactant 2. Finally, we're going to go back to this formula of moles divided by volume to work out the concentration of reactant 2. You always start your titration calculation with whichever reactant you have two pieces of information about, the concentration and the volume. This will usually be the reactant that's been in your burette. So let's say that from my burette, I have used 24.00 centimetres cubed of hydrochloric acid. The convention is that titration volumes are always given to two decimal places, although the second decimal place will always be a zero or a five. In order to work out the number of moles, I'm going to need to use concentration is moles divided by volume, and I can then rearrange that to have moles is concentration times volume. However, since concentration is in moles per decimeter cubed, I need to be multiplying it by a volume that's in decimeters cubed. So my very first step will be to convert the volume I have, and I do that by dividing by a thousand. That gives me 0 0.024 decimeters cubed. So I'm then going to do 0 0.30, so that's my concentration, multiplied by 0.024 and that gives me a number of moles of 0.0072. Pause the video now and use this same method to calculate the amount of moles in each of these solutions. Although the questions do tell you the identity of each substance, this is actually irrelevant. It's not going to make any difference to your final answer, but they will do this in the exam, so I've done it here. Hopefully you were able to convert each one of those volumes into decimeters cubed and then work out that the first solution has 0.006 moles, the second solution contains 0.012 moles, the third solution contains 0.0064 moles, the fourth solution contains 0.0015 moles, and the final solution contains 0.0024 moles. How did you get on? Our second step is to use the coefficients in the symbol equation in order to work out the moles of the second substance. You're hopefully already familiar with this from predicted yield calculations. And the good news is that for GCC titration, it tends to be quite a lot easier. 
quite often you won't need to do this step at all because often the reaction is between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide so there aren't any coefficients and if that's not the reaction you're given then it's likely that you'll have sulfuric acid in which case we have this one to two ratio. So what my simple equation here tells me is that for every one mole of sulfuric acid because as we know there's an imaginary one in front of that sulfuric acid I'm going to need two moles of sodium hydroxide to react it with. So if I have 0.0012 moles of sulfuric acid, then I'll need to double that to get 0.0024 moles of sodium hydroxide. The coefficients are telling me the ratio, and I just need to obey that ratio in my number of moles. Here are six similar questions for you to have a go at. Watch out, because halfway through, the order of the reactants switches over, and therefore the operation that you're performing is also going to change. Pause the video and see if you can figure it out. So for the first three questions, we're given the moles of sulfuric acid and asked to calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide. And you can see from the coefficients that there are twice as many moles of sodium hydroxide. So therefore, you're going to need to double your moles of sulfuric acid. So if we have 0.0024 moles of sulfuric acid, we'll have 0.0048 moles of sodium hydroxide. Then if we have 0.0032, we'll have 0.0064. And if we have 0.0006 moles of sulfuric acid, then we'll have 0.0012 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now for the next three questions, we're given the sodium hydroxide and asked to work out the sulfuric acid. So we need to be doing the reverse operation. To get from sodium hydroxide to sulfuric acid, we divide by two. So if we start out with 0.0024, then in that case, we're going to need 0.0012 moles of the acid. And then if we have 0.0008 moles of sodium hydroxide, we'll only need 0.0004 moles of sulfuric acid to neutralize that. And finally, for 0.0036 moles of sodium hydroxide, we'll need 0.0018 moles of sulfuric acid. The third and final step in these GCSE chemistry titration calculations is to work out the concentration of that second reactant. As we know, concentration is the amount in moles divided by the volume in decimeters cubed. So again, I'm going to need to convert this volume here by dividing by 1000 to get 0.025 decimeters cubed. Then I can do 0.0012 divided by 0.025 to give me a final concentration of 0.0. 48 moles per decimeter cubed. Here are five more calculations for you to have a go at. So pause the video and see if you can work out the concentration in each instance. We start with 0.008 moles divided by 0.02 and that gives us a concentration of 0.4 moles per decimeter cubed. Our answers for the next questions are 0 0.36, 0 0.3, 0 0.25 and 0.45. Hopefully you're now feeling confident enough with those three intermediate steps to be able to tackle an extended question where we put it all together. In this question, 25 centimetres cubed of sulfuric acid is completely neutralised by 20 centimetres cubed of 0.4 molar potassium hydroxide. So our first step is to look for a reactant where we have two pieces of information and we can work out the amount of moles by multiplying the concentration by the volume. Here, that's going to be the potassium hydroxide. So I do 0.4 times 0.02 because the volume, of course, needs to be converted to decimeters cubed. That gives me 0.008 moles of potassium hydroxide. And it's always a good idea to annotate and say which chemicals you're talking about, because that way, if you make a silly mistake, your examiner can still award you follow through marks. Then in step two, I'm going to look at my equation here and look at the coefficients, including the imaginary one in front of the sulfuric acid. And I can see that for every two moles of potassium hydroxide, I only need one of sulfuric acid. In other words, to get from um, potassium hydroxide to sulfuric acid, I'm dividing by two. So I'm going to divide my number of moles by two. And again, I'm going to annotate and say what that number actually is. It doesn't take me very long. And if I make a silly mistake, it can help me to have some follow through marks. Then my third step is to work out the concentration by dividing the amount of moles by the volume. So we've got 0.004. And again, here, I'm going to need to put this into decimeters cubed. 
so this is going to be divided by 0 0.025 and that gives me a final concentration of 0 0.16 moles per decimeter cubed. Here's one more question and we're going to go through the same process. So our first step is to identify which reactant do we have two pieces of information about. And here you can see it's the sodium hydroxide. So again, we're going to start there working out that the number of moles is concentration times the volume. So 0 0.1 times 0 0.02 gives me 0 0.002 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now, you can see in this equation here, I don't have any coefficients. They're reacting in a one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm still going to write down that therefore I've got 0 0.002 moles of the acid, but I don't actually need to do any maths. And then my third step is still to work out the concentration. So concentration is moles divided by volume. So that's 0 0.002 divided by 0 0.025. And that gives me a final concentration of 0 0.08 moles per decimeter cubed. At this point, it's a good idea to do a common sense check. Does that sound like a sensible concentration? Well, my sodium hydroxide had a concentration of 0 0.1. And so this is a very similar order of magnitude. And also I had slightly less sodium hydroxide. So that suggests that that solution is slightly more concentrated. And so yes, this number does make sense. There's one final trick that the exam board can use to make these titration calculations slightly more extended and therefore worth slightly more marks. What you might be asked to do is to convert, rather than leaving your concentration in moles per decimeter cubed, and change it to grams per decimeter cubed. Now, this looks a little bit intimidating, and so a lot of people might just leave it blank, but actually this is a really simple operation. From the very start of Unit 3, you've been using this formula that mass is the relative formula mass multiplied by the number of moles. Now, if I divide both sides of that equation by volume, I'm left with an equation that converts moles per decimeter cubed into grams per decimeter cubed. All I'm doing is multiplying by MR. Because the volume's on both sides of the equation, it doesn't actually make any difference. So let's look at what this would look like in practice. Let's say that I have a box, and my box has a volume of 0.5 decimeters cubed. And into there, I dissolve 0.4 moles of a solute. So I'm going to have a concentration that is 0.4 divided by 0.5, which gives me 0.8 moles per decimeter cubed. Now let's say that instead I want that in grams per decimeter cubed. Now let's say that my solute is sodium hydroxide because it's got a nice easy MR to work out. Um, so the MR of that, the relative formula mass, is going to be 1 times 23 plus 1 times 16 plus 1 times 1, which gives me an MR of 40 grams per mole. And so if I do this original concentration multiplied by 40, I'm left with 32 grams per decimeter cubed. So you're just using this mass is Mr. Mole equation that you already know. To go from moles per decimeter cubed to grams per decimeter cubed, we're timesing by MR. And if for some unknown reason you wanted to go back the other way, you would need to divide by MR. Time for you to have some practice of doing this yourself. So we'll do the first one together, and then you can pause the video and work out the others on your own. So for each question, we need to know what the MR is first. So for hydrochloric acid, it's going to be one lot of one and one lot of 35.5, which is 36.5. And then as we said, to convert from moles per decimeter cubed to grams per decimeter cubed, we're just going to multiply by that MR. So here we're going to have 0.5 times 36.5, which gives 18.25 grams per decimeter cubed. So now pause the video and have a go at working out the other four on your own. So the relative formula mass of sodium hydroxide is 40. The relative formula mass of nitric acid is 63. The relative formula mass of sulfuric acid is 98. And the relative formula mass of potassium hydroxide is 56. So for each one of these, we're going to multiply by the MR. So 0 0.2 times 40 is going to give eight grams per decimeter cubed. 
um, 0.1 multiplied by 63 is going to give us 6.3 grams per decimeter cubed. 0.75 times 98 is going to give us 73.5 grams per decimeter cubed. And 0.6 times 56 gives us 33.6 grams per decimeter cubed. How did you get on? Here's one final question so that you can see how all of these pieces fit together. On the one occasion in recent years that this has come up in the GCSE paper, it's been the final question of the GCSE chemistry paper and it's been worth six marks. So it is quite tricky, but at the same time, with everything you've learned in this video, it's definitely achievable. As before, we start out by identifying which one of the reagents do we have two pieces of information for. So here it's my sodium hydroxide. And I'm going to use those in order to calculate what the number of moles is. So concentration multiplied by volume, remembering, of course, that we need to divide by a thousand in order to convert this volume into decimeters cubed. So 0.3 multiplied by 0.018 is going to give me 0.0054 moles. And again, I'm annotating as I go so that if I make a mistake, my examiner can award me follow through marks. Then for my step two, I'm going to need the equations, um, the simple equation that's given here, and I'm going to use the coefficients. So I've got two moles of sodium hydroxide for every one of sulfuric acid. And therefore, to work out my moles of sulfuric acid, I'm going to need to divide by two. So that gives me 0.0027 moles of sulfuric acid. Then I'm going to work out my molar concentration, which is what I was doing before. So 0.027 um, divided by 0.025 is going to give me 0.108 moles per decimeter cubed. So already I'm at four marks. And then my final two marks are for calculating the relative formula mass of sulfuric acid. And again, I want to say that's what this number is. So two lots of one, one lot of 32, four lots of 16 is 98. And then my final step is going to be multiplying that by my molar concentration to give me an answer of 10.584 grams per decimeter cubed. And that's my final answer. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this a useful tutorial for doing titration calculations. This is a tricky topic and the best thing to do now is lots and lots of practice. If you did find it useful then don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if there are other calculations you'd like some help with.